friendly reminder that nothing mentioned in this video is in any way financial advice and that before you take any type of financial steps you should absolutely consult with either a tax professional or your finance professional um, definitely before you take any action let's dive right in hey friends it's me Jackie from the financial literacy tribe coming at you with a brand new video I understand that the title of this video probably sounds so suspect at best. You're probably like, oh my God, this girl is like scamming us. She wants us to send her our like retirement money. And I promise you, I am not scamming you. If you would like to send me your retirement money, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, but I am not scamming you, I assure you. Uh, instead, this video is intended to show you how you can actually set up a very large uh, amount of money in a fund for your child or future child if you don't have children yet this is to instruct you how to do it harnessing the power of this magical thing called compounding interest so what is compounding interest and how can you use it to set your kid up for life basically what compounding interest is is it's when you have money sitting in an account whether it be a high yield savings account or a CD or even in the stock market. And that money begins to produce interest. And then the interest starts to produce interest. And then the interest that originally produced interest is also continuing to produce interest while the new interest is also produced. It's a lot of interest, yo. And the best part about it is that you don't have to be rich. You don't have to have a ton of money in order to do this. Literally, as long as you're able to put some money away in a bank account for your child um, and that money is earning a certain amount of interest, you can essentially do this so that your child will have a large sum of money waiting for them once they reach adulthood. So in order to effectively harness the power of compounding interest, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. Number one, the earlier you start, the better. The more time that your interest has to multiply, the more interest on top of interest on top of interest that you're going to be able to earn. So it stands to reason that you should start when your child is very young. Now, does that mean maybe you have a, a an older child or whatever? Does that mean that you can't get started now? No, of course you still can. You can still do this and use this tactic. Just keep in mind that it's not going to be as effective and you're not going to be able to grow as much money as you could have if you had started when your child was very young. But this is for anybody. Anybody can use this uh, particular strategy. It just works better with more time. So the more time, the better. How much money should you be putting away for your child for this type of account? In general, I would say that whatever it is that you can do, as long as it's not um, interfering with your specific financial goals. So make sure that it's a sum that is low enough that you can be consistent in terms of putting that money away and you're not going to miss it. It's not taking away from your rent. It's not taking away from your food or your savings account or your savings goals. So just make sure that it's small enough that you can stay consistent with putting that amount into a bank account. The last thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that the interest rate matters. Right now, where we are, effective right now, which is August 2020, the interest rate for most savings accounts is in the trash can. Like literally, it's less than like 2% right now for most savings accounts. So you're not gonna be able to earn as much by putting your money in a regular savings account as you would in like, let's say a CD or even in the stock market. Obviously, uh, the stock market has more risk, so you're gonna wanna keep that in mind. But in general, the returns tend to be much higher than if you were to use a regular savings account. Um, definitely talk to a financial advisor to see maybe what would be the best option for you, especially considering that taxes get involved at some point. Um, but definitely, I would say the stock market um, is definitely a better choice for this, specifically because the interest rate is so much higher. Just as an example, if you were to pick an index fund such as the S&P 500, um, annually, the average return has been about 9.8% annually. So that's obviously a much better choice as opposed to going with a savings account that's earning less than 2% right now. So obviously, 
the S&P 500 is going to come with more risk than putting it in a savings account, but it also has a higher potential yield. So talk to a financial advisor, do what's best for you and your family. But I'm just letting you know that the stock market is obviously going to be a better choice if you want a higher return than if you were just putting it into a regular standard savings account. All right, so let's crunch some numbers. For the purposes of this video, I do not like have kids of my own. So for the, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to have a hypothetical child. Uh, her name is Baby Rainbow. Uh, she is currently 12 months old in my imagination. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I am saving up for Baby Rainbow. And I am going to be using an index fund that is earning 7% annually for the purposes of this video. So using a compounding calculator, um, and if you're wondering where the heck do I find a compounding calculator, just check the description box because I put a link for a free one down below that I really like. Um, but using a compounding calculator, I figured out that if I only put away $50 a week, that's it, 50 bucks a week into that account, then by the time baby Rainbow is 18 years old, she's gonna have 79 thousand dollars in that account fifty dollars a week earning seven percent annually seventy nine thousand dollars for fifty dollars a week that's not bad um another example maybe fifty dollars seems like it's too much for you or you feel like you can't do it within your budget um how about one hundred dollars a month which would be twenty five dollars a week a hundred dollars a month also in the same index fund that's earning about 7% annually is going to give Baby Rainbow $81,000 by the time she is 25. The options are limitless. Maybe you have a lot more disposable income that you want to put into your account for your child. If you could put away using these same metrics, if you could put away $10,000 a year into the same exact account, by the time your kid is 30, they would literally be a millionaire. They would literally have over a million dollars by the time they were 30 years old uh, by you putting away $10,000 a year for them. I understand that that's a lot of money. Again, that's not going to work for everybody, but it is an option. So I guess the obvious question, specifically if you're going to utilize this strategy for saving up for college for your child, is why would I do this as opposed to going with a more traditional college savings plan, such as a 529 plan. Um, and the truth is, you can do either. They both have their own benefits and they both have their own negatives. I know a lot of people like the 529 plan specifically because it comes with a tax benefit. So depending on your state, because it's gonna vary from state to state, you may get a little nice little tax deduction if you're putting money away into a 529 for your child's college fund. Um, my only gripe with the 529 plan that I don't like is let's just say you're saving up all this money for your kid in a 529 plan, your kid turns 17 or 18 years old, and they tell you, hey dad, hey mom, I've decided that college is not for me. I don't wanna go to college, I don't wanna go to trade school. Okay, what happens to that money? Um, essentially, you now, because you've been paying into this 529 plan for the past 18 years or whatever, you have two choices. You can either give it to some other random relative, like a niece or somebody else who's going to college, okay? Or B, you're going to incur a penalty and have to pay taxes on it if you plan on taking that money out and using it not on educational expenses. So that's the one thing that I didn't like about it. So if you're definitely positive that your kid is going to college, then maybe a 529 plan would be a much better choice for you. Um, but if you're just not sure, or you don't wanna take that risk, then I would go with the alternative as far as, again, just staying consistent with putting money into a bank account of some kind that's earning a high amount of interest or an index fund or something like that because you have more flexibility with the money. You can use it on whatever. Maybe your child doesn't want to go to school. Maybe they decide that they want to get their real estate license and become a realtor. Maybe they decide that they want to start their own business and college is not for them. You'd be able to use those funds to support them financially um, without having the types of restrictions that a 529 plan would have. So that's the negative in my opinion with that. But certainly do your research, do what's best for your family. 
both of them would be good choices. So guys, that's going to do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and hit subscribe. Check out my blog, which is focusfrugalfab.com. I have some really good resources for you. As mentioned, nothing in this video is financial advice. You should absolutely always do what is best for your family. It's just a cool concept that I thought would be really great, specifically for families and people that have kids. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you soon. Bye.